So the, the real joy of Morecambe Bay is its complexity. The dance between the estuary and the river systems, the shifting sands, the cockles and mussels, the migrating birds that feed off the cockles and mussels. It's that continuous dance. And one of the real challenges for scientists in modelling is representing something that local with that complexity. How do you do that? How do you model the future? How do you capture that dance? Models of everywhere are a core concept in what we do. Models of everywhere are really trying to represent the unique characteristics of place. What is distinctive about that place? And how can we model the idiosyncrasies of that place? More completely, it's not just models of everywhere. It's also models of everything, bringing data together from the different facets of the environment. The behaviour of the rivers, the estuary, the shifting sands, and so on. And also, it's a model that represents all time. It's continuously evolving. There's a critical component where you're looking at current observations and challenging the models and learning over time. So the model is also a representation of that place at that time. And this applies also looking into the future. Continuously learning so you can capture the characteristics that might be coming, for example, from a changing climate. One of the difficulties in environmental science is you don't know the future. All you have to go on is the past. So longitudinal data records that stretch into the past are your best friends. You really need them. And that gives you a chance to look into the future. But of course it's not enough, because the future represents change, unpredictable change. And that's where you need to challenge your models and learn over time. When you see different signals coming through from the natural environment telling you there's something going on here, there's some element of profound change, your models have to represent that potential change. So this is all building up to the concept of what is often called a digital twin. And for me, this is a grand challenge of the environment. How can we take a place like Morecambe Bay and build a digital twin of that place? How can we have a virtual representation that honours this complexity? So digital twinning is a real challenge to everyone in the modelling sphere. How do we go about this? To answer this, we need to step back and consider the different styles of modelling used in the environmental sciences. Many of the models in this area are referred to as process models finding mathematical representations for the complex underlying processes involved in natural systems. Increasingly as well, we have data models, that is understanding derived from data, for example, using machine learning. What we now need to do is find that sweet spot where these different modeling paradigms can work together and through this, we will be able to obtain that real understanding of place in all its complexities at that time and into the future.